Today I would like to review the book The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis. The Silver Chair is part of the Chronicles of Narnia, but it's it's the book that I think is the is maybe uh, the most overlooked, just because it's right smack in the middle of the seven books that make up the Chronicles of Narnia. <clears throat> um, to me, from what I can remember, it's the best of the seven. It's certainly my favorite of uh, of the series, <clears throat> and I, I'm a I'm a fan of the the series that you know have been since a since my childhood. So, um, so that's saying something. I think that the silver chair, and some of those of you old enough to remember that there was a band in the '90s called the Silver Chair. I don't think they, I don't think there's anything special about them, but uh, they chose that title to name their band after. I don't know for for any reason other than that sounded cool. But um, but there you go. Now I I, I want to just talk about certain things that I, th I find really uh, strikingly interesting about the silver chair <clears throat> as a, uh, as a book in this greater series of uh, this this um, fantasy adventure series that's uh, as popular with many people as the uh, the uh, J.R.R. Tolkien um, uh, um, series about the the Ring. What do they call it? The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, the all, all that stuff. The 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 Middle Earth Chronicles. Um, and of course, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien were friends. They were part of the Ink Inklings, uh, a group of uh, academics who were into fantasy writing and who got together regularly and they showed each other their work and helped one another out. Tolkien and Lewis both uh, were men uh, of great faith. Tolkien was Catholic. Lewis was Anglican. But um, I would say that while uh, uh, Tolkien's series has references or uh, analogical uh, uh, aspe aspects that you could relate to faith. I think in, I think the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, it's a little bit, uh, because, because they were written for children, although I, I don't think you, you ha I think you can enjoy them at any age. I want to make that clear. But I think because they were written for children, they, they have a bit more, uh, um, it's it's a bit more direct. It's a bit it's 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 never what I would say didactic, uh, uh, and I think you can enjoy it whatever your your uh, faith may be, even if you have no faith. But I would say that it's a uh, it's a series where you you have an easier time. For example, if you don't you, you if you're not even if you're a kid. You, you probably understand at some point that Aslan is God. <laughs> it's pretty hard to see that uh, Aslan, the, the great lion Aslan, is not the Christian God. <clears throat> um, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much right there spelled out for you. Um, and I remember getting that even when I was when I was young. Anyhow, let me get into talking about The Silver Chair because I just recently reread it and have a renewed appreciation of it. So let's talk about it. This this book um, follows, uh, uh, there, there, there's just various things I, I can say about the book that I find uh, endearing and, uh, and intriguing. And um, the, the two main characters are one one of the things that uh, uh, I think draws us in to the book, Eustace Scrub, who appeared in the earlier book, *The Voyage of the Dawn Treader*, he was originally this this uh, spoiled little twit, but over the course of *Voyage of the Dawn Treader*, he became reformed, and, and then he he uh, 
by the time it's over, he's he's uh, he's a proper uh, you know uh, 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 <laughs> little boy again with uh, uh, with all the all of the twittishness sort of beaten out of him. Um, and um, so so we have Eustace uh, Scrub and uh, Jill Pole, so a boy and a girl are uh, who are students at this terrible school called Experiment House. And this is Lewis's depiction of a liberal school where they don't enforce any kind of discipline and let the kids run wild. And so as a result, uh, the, all of the, the mean kids rule the, uh, rule the roost and nothing is ever done about it. So, uh, everybody who's not, uh, amongst the, uh, the meanest, uh, click just gets, uh, unmercifully bullied. Um, and Jill Pohl, when we first meet her, she's, and she's really the main character. It's, it's her point of view from which we're, we're hearing everything that, that's, that's happening. Um, she's crying, uh, uh, she's hiding away crying, uh, because, uh, she's, she's had to endure, uh, a bit of, um, uh, pretty nasty bullying. And then Eustace, comes across her. And one of the things that's really uh, cute about the relationship between Eustace and Jill is the way in which they, they call each other by their last names. It's, it's like, well, Scrub, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I'll t I tell you what, Pole, uh, and, you know, so this, it's, it, it's, it's in keeping with Lewis's knowledge of English school children customs, where once you reach reach a certain age, especially you 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 always uh, call one another by by your surnames, never by your Christian names, or hardly ever by your Christian names. It's just part of the part of the culture, and something that's very understated in the book, but I think is really uh, well done is uh, the, the you could say there's there's sort of a you know. Uh, uh, there's a very innocent kind of uh, uh, budding romance between these two characters, um, although it's it's never, you know, spelled out, uh, you know, for for certain. You can see it in certain things that they, certain ways in which that they they uh, relate to one another. Certain things that they say at certain times uh, cause you to see that they that they're quite fond of one another, um, and it's very sweet. Um, and, uh, uh, but I, again, tastefully done because these are probably, these are like 12 or 13 year old kids. Uh, so, so there's nothing, <laughs> there's absolutely nothing blatant, but you just can kind of see that, uh, that they like each other. Um, now, uh, um, at the beginning of the book, Eustace knows about this land, this, this foreign land, this magical land called Narnia. And he tells uh, Jill about it, and they uh, decide to try to summon Aslan, and then they, they get chased by some of the mean kids, and then eventually get pulled into Narnia, and it's Eustace's second time in Narnia, Jill's first time. Uh, so again, everything we hear is through the point of view of Jill. Um, there's, a, there's a sequence in... I think chapter two, that is so cool that I, I remember when I, I, actually when I read this as a kid, that I went back and read that chapter again just because I loved the, the description so much. The, the act, when they first enter Narnia, they, they, they start out in the realm of, uh, 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 of Aslan, where, the place where Aslan dwells, which is on a high mountain, uh, you know, far away from where, uh, the action takes place. Um, and Aslan meets, uh, uh, meets up with Jill and, uh, Eustace and Jill both get, uh, transported to Narnia in just the coolest way. First, Jill is told that she has to keep, that, that there are four signs that she has to keep, that it's very important that she remember. And they're all about finding this prince who has gone lost. And, uh, uh, 
and so that that that's, that becomes part of their their adventure. But the description in that chapter about how they get uh, how Aslan takes uh, uh, transports them to Narnia on his breath is uh, so cool. Um, uh, he he breathes uh, on Jill. And then Jill's, before she knows it, she's flying through the air. But she's not, uh, she's not, it's not a frightening thing. It's just sort of a, a, a wow, I'm, I'm going through the air. And her, the description of her seeing things and, and you know, uh, flying in this particular direction, on this partic- particular trajectory. And then, and then uh, eventually, you know, coming getting lower and and seeing the clouds and hearing the waves and and uh hearing the the birds and and then coming up on a a a particular site uh uh where there's um a, a a ship about to leave and there's all this fanfare around the ship uh you know all this narnian fanfare and then and then she she lands on the ground uh and it's just it's just so it's so wonderfully described. Uh, it, it, it's so, uh, it's like something that, that you wish you could do. It's like you wish you were there. There's so much about the Narnia books that's like that. You, uh, you know, you wish that it was real. You wish you could go there. You, you know, f- most people know uh, the first book, um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And that involves this magic wardrobe that, that was built from uh, we we find out later in the series from a, a tree, um, a tree from in in Narnia uh, that uh, so so uh, sometimes you open the wardrobe uh, in Aslan willing you it, you can there's no end to the back of the wardrobe you just keep walking and walking and then you're in you're in uh, Narnia um, and there's all kinds of cool ways in which they the uh, the kids uh, find themselves in in Narnia again. Narnian uh, time is another interesting thing. Um, we, uh, the way that it works is when, whenever you leave Earth and you enter Narnia, you can stay in Narnia for years. You can live you know, your whole life in Narnia and be, like, be an old man. Uh, and then if you're, if you're taken back to uh, Earth again, then you will come back to the same spot where you left, and you will be the exact same age that you were when you left. Um, but once you leave Narnia, you don't know how, how much time uh, is passing in Narnia. So Earth just Earth time just freezes for all the time you're gone, and uh, <clears throat> um, and then when you come back, you're you're right back where you came from at exactly the moment when you left and uh, you're back at the age that you were um <clears throat> so no matter how long you're gone if you're gone an hour if you're gone a year if you're gone uh you know decades you still come back as yourself as you were the age that you were when you left um but if you enter narnia again it might be 100 years later it might be 500 years later um so that's that's how narnian time works 